By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I've got something really cool for you. It is an alpha beta match. What does that mean? It means that both of us are playing with decks completely met up out of alpha and beta cards. So only core set cards, all black bordered. I mean, I love looking at these decks. They're just gorgeous. My opponent today is Buddy. He's a brand new patron. Thank you for your support. And he's bringing a beautiful mono green deck to the table. And he's taking on my mono blue beta flyers deck. So, uh, I mean, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, there are actually some rules to the alpha beta uh, you know, uh, rule set playing magic. You know, there are some restrictions in place to keep the, uh, the 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 match balanced, I guess. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, please check out the description below because there you will find all the rules. They're called AB4K rules. And uh, one of the most impactful rules to this match is that control magic is restricted. So when you see my deck list in a bit, you're going to only see one control magic in there because it's restricted in this format. I guess it's just too powerful if you're only playing with alpha beta there are not a lot of answers to enchantments i guess although there are some but i mean yeah control magic is a very can be a very decisive card in this kind of meta um before i start though with the deck decks i would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to skip this section go directly to the match i know some people enjoy doing that the easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg games if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And uh, here I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the, the deck of my opponent. It's such a gorgeous deck. Let's take a look at this Mono uh, Green Brew. And here we see the Mono Green deck of Buddy. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? And it's really what Green, you know, does best. Just playing lots and lots of creatures, turning them sideways, probably try to go faster than me. Probably is going to be successful in that with those Lana Ralves. And, you know, just, just play the cards out. He's playing with four Giant Groves and even more scary, the three Berserks in the deck. I think that's really an important card in this deck. It's an instant for one green that says cast this spell only before the combat damage step. Um, and target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is its power. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy that creature if it attacked this turn. So what that means is if you, for example, have a Grizzly Bears, Put a giant growth on there make it a 5-5 when you then attack with it and play berserk it becomes a 10-5 trampler so you can see how berserk you know can be a problem if he has two berserks he can make it a 25 trampler you know so he can kill me in one blow of course he needs you know all the stars to be aligned and me as a blue player he has to have the luck that i don't have a counter spell but i can see that happen you know maybe i tap out because i'm under pressure that's a problem for me when playing against these decks. If you want to play the counter game, um, you know, it works until the point that you're actually under pressure by your opponent because then you have to start playing out cards. You have to tap out. You can no longer have that counter spell, uh, you know, handy because you simply don't have the mana to counter any of the spells of your opponent. So I can I can really see that work. He's also playing with Lure. Uh, Lure is pretty cool. So it's a two green and one, an enchant creature. You put it on the creature, then if you attack... Your opponent has to block that creature with all the creatures that he or she has. It's no option. All the legal possible blocks, I have to say. So you can, of course, play that on a Thicket Basilisk, which is not in this deck. But it's still a good card, I think. You can play it on Cockatrice, of course, kill all the Flyers. And I'm playing with a lot of Flyers because my deck is called, you know, Beta Blue Flyers. <laughs> so so that can be quite good against me. And also, you can just use it to, to say, okay, I'm going to play my Lure on my script, script, uh, script Sprites so that all my other... Uh, creatures can attack right so because i have to block the script sprites with all my creatures in that case when there's a lure on the uh, on the sprites so i mean that's a way of, of making lure work as well it's, it doesn't always have to be on a death touch creature you know it, it can still do a lot of work just playing it on one of your creatures so that the other creatures can break through i mean think of the juggernauts for example five three powerhouses or even scarier for me the force of nature which is super cool to see it in his in his main 60 and in the sideboard i see a gaius leech i'm a huge fan of the leech i understand why nobody plays it but it's it's such a cool card it can turn lands into forests i mean what's not to love about this one and then we also have uh, the Hive here in this deck and a card that I think is going to be quite good in this matchup, Rod of Ruin. He only plays with one Rod of Ruin, but I mean, I'm playing with uh, Phantasmal Forces, for example. 
Uh, he can kill it with Rod of Ruin. And I just think Rod of Ruin can just be this very annoying card. I'm not playing with Prodigal Sorcerers here. They are in my sideboard. So if I board them in after the first match, um, you know, then he... And if he can then find his Rod of Ruin, it can be very... Uh, yeah, a, a very difficult situation for me. That's not the scenario that I'm hoping for. Uh, we also see Hurricanes, which I think are always quite good in an aggressive deck because it gives green that direct damage option to kind of win it and of course a beautiful stream of life i love it i love seeing stream of life there are only two cards from the uh, limited edition alpha where the rules text has never been changed and that is time walk and stream of life so in a way stream of life is like the perfect magic card right because the rules never had to be changed on that one anyway this is the deck of uh buddy or wait wait one second do you see that card in the sideboard do you see that? I'm, I'm, I didn't see it first, but now he's got three of those. That is scary. Tsunami. Oh, Lord. Three tsunamis. I think I'm going to be toast after sideboarding. Anyway, this is the deck of Buddy. Now let's take a look at my beta blue flyers list. And here we see my deck. So it's beta blue flyers. There are actually a few alpha cards in here. Maybe you can uh, find it out during the game what cards are alpha. There are, I believe, three or four alpha cards in here. Um, but yeah, this deck, the idea is simple, right? I just want to play flying creatures because flying is great evasion, especially in alpha beta. Um, they're quite strong creatures as well, right? I've got three air elementals. I've got three phantasmal uh, forces. I've got uh, four phantom monsters. I've got a clone. I even have a Mahamoti Jin. So, you know, I just want to want to dominate the air and kind of win from there. Control my opponent with icy manipulators and of course counter away all the threats. I'm also playing with two psionic blasts to kill maybe some creatures. There's also some nice uh, synergy in here between icy manipulator and psychic venom. I'm playing with one psychic venom. I also have a brain geyser, so that's quite nice. I've got a copy artifact to maybe copy some threats of my opponent or copy my, my book or an icy. I think the unsummons in this game are going to be really, really good. I mean, it's an instant for one blue return target creature to its owner's hand. And I mean, why is that so good in this match? Because my opponent plays Giant Groves, Berserks. So in response to his tricks, I can just send it back to his hand just for one blue mana. So I don't even have to have Counter Magic up to do that. Talking about Counter Magic, this deck is pretty counter heavy. I'm playing with four Counter Spells, two Power Sinks, and two Spell Blasts. So I just really went for that full counter package because I thought it's fun. It's also interesting for me. And yes, I said it, countering can be fun when you're the player countering because it's very strategic, right? You have to choose, am I going to keep mana open to counter or am I going to play something out? Uh, what kind of counter spell do I have in hand? How much mana does my opponent have, for example, with Power Sync or Spell Blast? So it, it's quite interesting. And, and Spell Blast is a counter spell that I hardly ever play with. And people have told me that it's better than you think when you play with it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to play with it in alpha beta and see how good or bad it actually is. Now, I've made one little change to this deck that I want to mention. I've added a Chaos Orb because I'm fortunate enough to now own a beta Chaos Orb. So it's in this deck and I actually can't remember what I took out. Like we played this game a while ago. I think I took out an Unsummon. I hope I didn't because it's so good in this matchup, but I think I took out an Unsummon. Um, what's of course important to note, which is always the case, we don't see each other's deck lists beforehand. So all I know is that we're going to play alpha beta. I don't know that my opponent is, has mono green, for example, and he doesn't know that I have mono blue, although he probably suspects me play, playing with mono blue. But anyway, just to make a point, it's not like I tweak my deck based on the deck that I'm going to play against. Um, then in my sideboard, there's actually not a lot against green. Like I'm not playing with life tap. I don't own... Uh, life tap and beta which could i could consider getting one it's it's a fun card um i have i've got phantasmal terrains in my sideboard i don't really know why i just have a lot of those and one sea serpent because it's cool and of course timmy's i think the timmy's and the pirate ship could come in after the first game because you know the mono green deck has got a lot of one toughness creatures so i i, I think that could be an idea to board those in and of course i have to be I have to think about the Rod of Ruin, but the chances are because he's only playing with one main and one sideboard, he's probably, I'm probably not going to see it game one and then I'm going to board into Tim's or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, after sideboarding is going to be interesting also because of the tsunamis that we saw earlier. But I think, I mean, my deck is looking really strong. I think I have a really um, good chance here before sideboarding and after sideboarding, I just have to make sure that I counter away the tsunami. I think that's going to be, you know, very important things to think about after the first game. Anyway, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of Buddy. That means we are ready. Let's go!
to the match. Game number one, here we go, buddy. On the play, sitting on the left with a mono green deck, taking on my mono blue deck. It looks like I've taken a mulligan. So now I've got seven after the draw, starting with the basic island pass in good turn. We see Buddy there has already played out a script sprites. So he's probably going to deal some damage. And I'm going to drop here to 19. Not the greatest screen there on the side of Buddy, but I'll keep you up to date on the cards here. We see Helm of Chatsuk. That's pretty sweet. And the script sprites. So Helm of Chatsuk can give banding. It's pretty cool. Love the art. There's a second blue. Let's see what I'm going to do. Passing the turn, doing nothing, I guess. And there's the attack for two. Oh, man, this is going too fast on 17. No pump, no creature from Buddy. That's good. Good news for me playing land number three. I think four for me is kind of the, the sweet spot because then I can play Phantom Monsters and those Phantasmal Forces playing out a Chaos Orb. Yeah, Chaos Orb at this board is not the greatest. At least I can respond with the Chaos Orb activation if he tries to play a Giant Grove or a Berserk. There's the attack for two. Gonna drop to 15. I mean, I could consider taking away one of the sprites. It looks like I am gonna flip. Probably at the end of turn. Let's see. And it's a hit. Ooh, it was a little bit like... It went a little bit too much off the side for my taste, but hey, it was a hit. Took care of one of the sprites. Untapping. But yeah, trading. Oh, missing a land drop. That is tough. Oh no. Also because four is like my, my, my number. I need four to kind of start playing out creatures. I do have one wall of air in the deck, which is great again in this match. But, ooh, what's that card? There's a counter spell though. Not quite sure. I think it's a Juggernaut, an Altered Juggernaut here hitting the board. And uh, it's hard to see. But I countered away the Juggernaut, kind of tapping my deck there, hoping to find an island. At least there's only one threat on the table on the side of Buddy, just a 1-1. One -one. So I've got some time going to drop to 13. Tapping 4 again. What are we going to see? Another Juggernaut. There's a Giant Spider. Another counter spell. So I'm really countering away those... Bigger threats at the moment. And drawing another card for turn. Okay, finally found the island. Do I have a Phantom Monster or a Phantasmal Forces? Gonna tap four. Okay, there's a Phantom Monster 3-3 three, three Flyer. So that's quite good. It can block the script sprites. And maybe even start attacking. Four cards in hand there. Buddy again tapping out. Four mana. Untapping again though, first gonna attack it seems. That makes more sense, having now this threat online of a potential giant growth. Am I gonna block? I mean, I can trade a giant growth for a phantom, which is not too bad, I think. So I'm gonna accept here, I'm gonna block. Let's see if Buddy has an answer. Little glitches there on this line. Oh, look at that, he's gonna play a hurricane after. Hurricane for three. Which is kind of great for Buddy because he's ahead on life anyway. I think um, his life total is now 17, right? This is the first damage he took, I believe. Another Phantom Monster from my side of the board. Yeah, four mana is really what my deck needs to kind of start start going, you know, play out those flyers. Buddy there playing a War Mammoth. Really hard to see at the moment. The screen uh, does get a little bit better, I believe, later on in the match. But right now it's really tough to kind of see what's going on on his side of the battlefield. But it is a War Mammoth, a 3-3 Trampler for 4. There's a Phantasmal Forces. So, wow, now I'm really dominating the air, potentially taking over the game. I mean, I guess I have to attack here, right? Put him on 14. Exactly. So, it looks like he's on 12, actually, or 14. It's, it's really hard to see with those dice and the quality of the screen. But I believe it's 14. But it's looking quite good for me. I can swing in for seven next turn, kind of half his life. There's the attack with the War Mammoth. I am going to take the trade here. Still take two damage. Problem, of course, is here that I'm, 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 I'm a bit low. So I should take two damage here because War Mammoth has Trample. So are we forgetting that? There's a Script Sprites. Ooh, and there's a Rod of Ruin. Interesting that he attacked with the Phantasmal Forces, knowing that he had that Rod of Ruin. 
Maybe I wouldn't have attacked, waited a turn. Anyway, I should take two points of trample damage here, so we're making a mistake here. Should be on eight. Putting Buddy here on 11 after the attack. And this is kind of risky, right? Because, I mean, he can attack, put me on nine. If he's got Giant Grove's Berserks, it could be a real problem. We haven't seen any Giant Grove or any Berserk. Remember, he's playing four Giant Groves and three Berserks. Tapping two green, or we're going to see a Grizzly Bear, a Giant Grove. Ooh, I wonder what he's going to get back. He's got a Juggernaut in there. He's got the War Mammoth in there. He's got the Scrub Sprites in there. Maybe Juggernaut would be a card to go for. I think the problem here for Buddy, though, is that I've got four open. So maybe I'm thinking, you know, just let him let him get whatever he wants to get, and I'll, I'll counter whatever he's going to cast. And remember, with Giant Grove, you have to show what you're going to get. Oh, going to go for the uh, Giant Spider. Of course, he can do Giant Spider, Phantom Monster, and then use his Rod of Rune to kill the Phantom Monster. Tapping a blue. Okay, going to play an Unsummon here on the Spider. So I'm going to send it back, going to untap. I can attack now again, put Buddy on 8. It's probably what I'm going to do here, exactly. So he's on 8. Going to tap 3. There's a Wall of Air. Okay, this wall is quite good. A 1-5 for 2 blue and 1 flying. So it can block the script sprites. So a bit of a problem here for Buddy, but I mean, Buddy still, still has the Rod of Rune, kind of needs... Can recast a giant spider, of course, as a soul ring. And there's probably the giant spider back again. Again, a lot of glitches here on the line. So there's the giant spider. Hmm, it's looking quite good. Who's going to ping me for one now? That's interesting. I would have waited personally to see if I wanted to attack with the phantom monster because then he could have blocked on the spider and then used the... Uh, Rod of Ruin, and he can always use the Rod of Ruin on my end step, of course. But I made a different decision. I'm on eight. Tapping three blue. There's a Psionic Blast. Am I going to kill the spider? Dealing two points of damage to myself as well. So I'm dropping to six. Killing the spider. Attacking for three. It's going to take the damage. going to drop to five. Ooh. Risky moments here. Could have, of course, decided to play the Psionic Blast on the life total of Buddy as well, but I think this is a better move. But I am on 6, and remember, I should have been on 4 because I forgot to take the Trample Damage from the War Mammoth. So is that going to be decisive in this first game? Buddy having a lot of mana here. If he has a Hurricane, he could make it a draw. There's another War Mammoth. Oh man, this is this is this is scary, right? He's gonna use Rod of Rune, gonna drop to five. Like, am I gonna attack with the Phantom? I am attacking here with the Phantom, gonna put him on two, but then of course, kind of putting myself open here. Let's see if he's gonna take yeah, he's gonna take the damage, gonna drop to two. Gonna tap five. Are we gonna see an air elemental? Okay, there's an air elemental. Yeah, I really have like big strong creatures in the deck, so I should be able to win it at this stage in the game. I think at the start of the game, Buddy is pr probably has the better deck, but later on in the game, I can kind of take over, which is exactly what's happening. The problem for me, though, is I'm on five, but Buddy's only on two. Like he needs at least another flyer to chump, and he doesn't have a good attack anymore. Could, of course, consider attacking... Oh, he's going to attack in a band. Of course, he's got the Helm of Chatsuk. I love this. Attacking now a 4-4 four because four, they're in a band together. How banding works is when I block, he gets to uh, decide where the damage goes to. I'm just blocking on my Wall of Air. And then, of course, he can use the Rod of Rune to kill the Wall of Air. The problem here for Buddy, though, is that I can just kill him on the crackback. That's exactly what he does. So it's a really cool way to kind of kill the wall of air. So definitely style points here for Buddy. The problem is, though, that I'm not going to attack for seven. I don't really see a way out of here. I don't believe he's playing with Fog. Fog would have been quite brilliant right now. Fog would have given him the game, actually. 
And uh, yep, that's it, winning here game number one. But I really hope that I'm not gonna forget the trample damage uh, in game two and three, because it's quite relevant here with, uh, with Buddy's strategy. Anyway, this is game number one. We are going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Buddy, of course, on the play after losing that first game, starting out really well here with a, a soul ring. I'm kind of worried about his uh, turn two, because now he can play War Mammoth, he can play Giant Spider, it can be quite scary. And I'm playing out a pretty cool island here. This is an altar made by Buddy, and it has a pirate ship on there, a Leviathan and a Storm Crow in the distance. So it's a really sweet altar. But look at this Buddy turn two War Mammoth. I am in serious trouble here. I mean, this is so good against my deck, you know, that tempo game that he's playing right now. He can start hitting me for three a turn, and it's gonna take a while before I have a blocker up. If I'm lucky, maybe I can find my wall of air, but I mean, there's a very slim chance. Okay, there's a juggernaut. Okay, there's a counter spell though on the juggernaut. Again, an altered juggernaut, obviously. Playing out an island, island number three here. But that soul just passing the turn. I mean, the islands look nice, but six in hand, passing the turn, buddy now having access to so much mana. I'm kind of scared, attacking me again for three, dropping to 14. I mean, that, that war mammoth is doing work. And what is this card? Oh, it's a cockatrice to two, four flying. That when it's blocked or when it blocks, the creatures are then dead. Kind of a death touch ability that the cockatrice has, but different because it doesn't have to deal the damage to have that killing effect, which could be relevant. Okay, there is a clone, probably going to clone the cockatrice here because it's also a great blocker for the war mammoth. Okay, so that's not too bad. You know, I've got something. I mean, Cockatrice is a great wall. I'm expecting Buddy to your attack with his Cockatrice to kind of offer a trade. Looks like he first wants to play something out. Gonna tap five, it seems. There's a Hurricane. Oh, wow, I just found the Cockatrice in my binder, but now there's already a Hurricane. So we're both gonna take four damage and we're gonna lose our Flyer. So I'm gonna drop to 10. Oh, this is really bad news for me. And he can attack me again with the War Mammoth. Put me on seven. So I believe the War Mammoth has now dealt 9 damage. I mean, have you ever seen a match where a single War Mammoth does so much work? It is pretty sweet to see. I mean, I've got 5 exactly. Now I've got access to my Air Elementals, playing 3 Air Elementals in the deck. 4-4 four, four Flyer, and of course a really good creature against Buddy. But if Buddy, for example, now has a Giant Grove, he can attack, kill my Air Elemental, and deal 2 points of damage. I'm going to block here. Oh, is that a giant grove? Yep, that's a giant grove. And now I am taking the trample damage. Okay, so that's good to see. Yeah, I remember I, I, I used to, we used to call this the small, f oh no, tsunami. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I'm so dead. I am so dead. I wanted to say we used to call it the small force of nature. Like if you played a giant grove on a war mammoth. You know, because it's 6-6 six, six Trampler, but wow, this Tsunami. This Tsunami, wow, for a moment there, I had no permanence on the board at all. There's the attack. Going to drop to two. I mean, only an Unsummon can kind of give me an another turn. There's a Script Sprites. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Okay, another island. At least I've got some land still in hand, I guess. You know, it could be worse, but I'm going to die here. That tsunami has really ruined it for me. Tapping a blue, though. Okay, there's an unsummon. Okay, so that's going to, you know, give me one more turn. One more turn. I'm so dead. There's going to be the uh, war mammoth again. Again, some glitches on the line of buddy, but we can kind of recognize the cards. We'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, there's another blue. Another island, three cards in hand, passing the turn back to Buddy. I mean, even an Unsummon cannot save me now because he also has the script sprites. I'm on one, like I need to find a way to get rid of both creatures. Okay, showing my hand, that's it. So game number two is won by Buddy. That means it's one, one. And I mean, that Tsunami, that was such a killer. But also the Hurricane. Hurricane is doing a lot of work in this uh, match as well. Definitely one of the MVP cards on the side of Buddy. Anyway, this is game number two. It's 1-1. We're going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with you in game number three.
Game number three, here we go. At least I'm on the play, you know. That's something for the decisive game three. Okay, starting with the Soul Ring, that's good. Only four cards in hand there, so it looks like I took a mulligan. Passing turn, also a Soul Ring for Buddy. Okay, are we gonna see that War Mammoth again? I mean, I'm gonna have nightmares here. Anyway, playing out an island for a mana. Are we gonna see a Flyer? Phantom Monster, Phantasmal Forces, maybe an Icy. Okay, Phantom Monster, 3-3 three, three Flyer. So that can start uh, dealing some damage. So turn two Phantom. And a turn two, I mean, Giant Spider will be quite good here. Okay, turn two Juggernaut. Okay, 5-3, that has to attack every turn. Probably going to trade that for the, uh, for the Phantom Monster. Five mana, do I have an Air Elemental? That would be quite good. I wonder what I have. Looks like I'm going to tap four again. Ooh, I've got a Control Magic. That is really good. Taking over the Juggernaut. Okay, wow. This is a great start for me and attacking for three. So I'm going to put Buddy here on 17. And I mean, this is a problem. It's really hard for, for Green to get rid of artifacts or to, you know, get rid of enchantments. You've got Tranquility, of course. But I wonder if he actually plays it. Gonna tap four. Okay, there is a War Mammoth. Okay, so he can trade the War Mammoth for his own Juggernaut, which is something at least. But still, it's a two for one. So it's still bad for Buddy, but it's the best option for him, I, I think. Exactly, that's what he's gonna do. So trading here, gonna take another three points of damage, dropping to 14. So it's looking quite good for me here. And I've got six mana. Do I have a Mahamoti? That will be, that will be amazing. Okay, another, another Phantom Monster, not complaining. Another 3-3 three, three Flyer. The only problem I have, I guess, is that I only have one card in hand. There's another Force for Buddy. He's going to tap 4. Okay, there's a Giant Spider, so I can at least stop one of the monsters. And what is that? It's Crypt Sprites, so he could consider double blocking, killing one of the monsters. Making it kind of hard for me to decide, because then I'm basically trading a Phantom Monster for his Crypt Sprites, but I am also dealing 3 points of damage. Hmm, difficult. It's not really a good attack. Two cards in hand. Yep, not attacking, passing the turn. So that one Chris Price actually makes a lot of difference. If it would have just been a spider, I could have attacked with both. One would have been blocked, one would have dealt damage. That's fine, but now that there's that Sprite, so that one 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 flyer makes a big difference in the strategy. There's the attack, okay. I am going to block, kind of in doubt, expecting, of course, a Giant Grove here. That's exactly what we're seeing. Giant Grove killing the Phantom Monster. Or do I have an Unsummon? Going to tap two. Okay, I'm going to counter the Giant Grove. Another Giant Grove, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. Do I have a Spell Blast? Like, I never play with Spell Blast. So it would be kind of nice to see Spell Blast doing some good. No, I don't. It is going to die, but hey, at least he had to invest two giant groves in there. So that's something. Going to pass the turn back to me. Going to play an island. I mean, if I can find that brain geyser, that could be a game, a game changer. But I mean, I had a really strong start, right? With the, with the soul ring, phantom monster, control magic. But I mean, Buddy is coming back into this. And he's still pretty high in life. He's on 14. And I believe he's got maybe... Three cards in hand. Just attack him with the spider. So this is risky. I mean, I'm on 20. There's no need to block. Yeah, going to take the damage here. Going to go to 18. And this is a difficult thing playing against these decks because he can kind of, you know, pretend like he has it, but he doesn't have it. And then he's going to attack now again next turn. Am I again going to take two points of damage? You know, at a certain point, I have to start blocking. Exactly. Going to block now. Are we going to see a giant growth? We're going to see a Berserk. Okay, I mean, that does the trick. At least then the um, Spider is dead. Oh, look at this. I've got a Power Sink. So I'm going to Power Sink the Berserk. I mean, should I? Because at least this also kills the Spider. I mean, I'm not sure about this decision. Maybe I just should have traded. Although then, of course, Buddy has that script Sprite that he can keep continue attacking with. So, I guess from that point of view, but it's just one damage, though. Anyway, Buddy playing another Force, passing the turn. 
I wouldn't mind drawing into my Jam Day Tome or, or Brain Geyser, of course, that would be even better. But I just need some card draw. Tacking for three through the air here, quite aggressive. It's going to take the damage, so dropping to 11. But now, of course, he can attack me at least for one on the crackback. I mean, Buddy's on the lower life total because I, I started quite aggressively, right, with the turn two Phantom, but he's all back now. What is he going to do? Okay, so that, of course, that should be in the graveyard. The Berserk. Okay, he's going to play a Giant Grove. Is he going to get the Berserk back? Or, oh, he's going to get the Juggernaut back. Okay. That's some ultimate pressure. So he's going to tap 4 for the 5-3. Has to attack every turn if possible. He's going to attack with the Spider. Put me on... And the Sprite's going to put me on 15. This is quite aggressive. Expecting me, of course, to keep the... Phantom on blocking duty. Oh, look at this steel artifact. Oh, that's cool. Wow, I'm lucky here top decking that steel artifact. And now I can also attack for three, put him on eight. I mean, this is this is looking quite good for me. I mean, it's it's great to end draw control magic and draw steel artifact. For a moment there, I kind of felt bad, but this steel artifact makes a big difference in the game. Next turn I can attack, and Buddy has a difficult choice to make what to do with that uh, Juggernaut. Anyway, let's first see what he can do. Attacking with the Sprites is going to put me here on 14. Or does he have some pump? No, he doesn't. Okay, there's a Lanawer L, so he could, of course, play Double Block, Lanawer, and Giant Spider. Another Island. Wow, I'm drawing a lot, a lot of lands. Yeah, attacking with both. I think that's a good decision. Remember, Buddy's on 8. He's quite low, actually. What is he going to do here? Is he going to double block the Juggernaut? He can also consider just chump blocking the Juggernaut on the Lanawar and blocking the Phantom with the Giant Spider. I mean, this is a pretty tough decision to make here for Buddy. I'm going to play an Unsummon. Okay, so I guess he's going to double block, and then I'm going to play an Unsummon on the Lanawar so that the Giant Spider dies. And he's going to take three points of damage. Ooh, he's going to drop to five. I can smell the victory. I'm so close here. First point of business for Buddy, I guess, is just to take care of the Juggernaut. And this is why white is such an insanely good uh, uh, color, right? Because you have access to Disenchant. You can just play a Disenchant and you can choose what you want to do. An enchantment or an artifact. But it's the only color that has such a powerful instant spell. Ooh, what's he gonna play? Oh, there's a force of nature! Oh, this changes a lot! This force of nature has a huge impact on the board. Oh, this is a big problem. I felt so confident, but this force changes everything. 8-8, eight, eight, trample, Powerhouse. Remember, I have to attack with the Juggernaut, which is going to be gobbled up by the Force, probably. I wish I still had that on summon. Oh, man. This changes a lot. You can see me. I'm really in the tank here, thinking one card in hand. Oh, man. This is tough. Attacking here. Yeah, it's going to die. Also here with the Phantom Monster. Okay, going a little bit aggressive. Yeah, blocking, of course, here the Juggernaut, so that's going to die. Going to jump block the Phantom Monster. Okay, he's on 5, remember, and I think he thinks if I take the damage, I'll go to 2, and then if I have a Psionic Blast in the head, I win the game, so that's probably why he jump blocks, and I think that's a good decision, because you've got the Force anyway to attack next turn. Oh, man. I mean, I'm on 14. I think I can take one more hit, but what if he's got a Berserk? That would be cool to see, by the way, but then I'm, I'm really toast. Oh, I'm really, really, really in the tank here. What can I do? Tapping four. Oh, I've got a clone in hand. Oh, wait, I remember this. Now, I played the clone, and I had this big thing in my head, because I have two options here, right? I can copy the force of nature of Buddy, 
But of course, I cannot pay the upkeep cost next turn, meaning I would take eight damage, I would go to six. But then again, if Buddy attacks, we can trade forces. Um, another thing I can do is say, I'm going to take the damage from the force, I'm going to copy the Phantom Monster, and then next turn I can kill you. So I, I had these two options, and I was really like in the tank trying to think what is the best decision. And we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I believe, I can't remember to be honest what my choice was in the end. What did I go for? Tapping three. Oh, there's a lure. It doesn't matter anymore because there's the lure. Or does it? Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. I think I went with the Phantom Monster. So now I have to block, uh, sorry, with the Force of Nature. And now I have to block the uh, Lana Rails because of the lure. So I cannot make the trade. And now it's my turn. And then I take the damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. And I think the reason, by the way, that I took the Force of Nature was I thought if he draws into, for example, a Cockatrice uh, or another flying creature, then I cannot kill him anyway. And the chances are bigger that he's going to find a Scripps Sprites or a Cockatrice than the chances of him finding, for example, a Lure or a Berserk. Although he only played one Berserk yet. So it, it was a really tough decision to make. Um, let me know in the comments below, would you have gone for the Force of Nature clone like I did? And of course, my idea was if he attacks with the Force, I block with my Force trade. If he doesn't attack, I take eight, but I attack him next turn with the Force and he has to block it because he's on five. That was my idea. But hey, then he top decked the lure. That was a brilliant play, putting the lure on the Lanawer. But yeah, let me know what you would have done. The other option obviously would have been clone the Phantom Monster. So I would have two Phantom Monsters and then take the hit from the Force and then attack it with the two Flyers. But if then, if he would have gotten, uh, you know, a Cockatrice or something else or Script Sprites, I, I still would have lost. But yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Although I think if I would have gone for the... Phantom Monster, he would have placed the lure on the Force, and I would have blocked the Force with the Phantom, lost the Phantom, so... It, 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 it would have been an interesting match, but I probably would have lost still, you know? But what a nice Game 3! I really love this Alpha Beta magic. It's 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 so pure, you know? I, I really love There's a lot of combat going on. Cards like Lure are relevant. Cards like Unsummon are relevant, uh, you know, creatures, they have, have a, a bigger meaning in this format. I really, really love it. Um, if you liked it too, by the way, let me know in the comments below. Also, like and share this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then you can also uh, decide to uh, become a patron of the show like Buddy. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a supporter of the show. And you can do that by checking out patreon.com slash timmytalks. And uh, the cool thing is you can already become a patron for just $1 a month and uh, then you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page and you can join in on the Timmy Talks online events. And uh, it's also possible to actually play a match against me. Uh, so check out, yeah, check it out if that's something that you're interested in. Have a look at patre patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Oh yes, and if you become a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do? Zing!